Check. What's good, man? You already know what's happening. It is. What's popping? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Uh, today we got a special guest. I mean, like this guy. You know how like you know somebody, but you don't know him. Like you see him grow and things like that. So I've been watching this guy platform for like literally years. I mean, he's done. Let's go ahead and I always say for the people that might not know, we let's. Let's 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 clear the room. So for all you clout chasers, it let you know some a little bit of background. Um, it's been on X Factor, uh, done shows with um Neo, um shows with Bow Wow, uh, was it John Legend? Yeah. Um, I mean the list goes on and on. The guy is super talented. I mean has been, shit. He's performed at many professional events, right? Like professional shows. I feel like you you did. Yeah, man, I was a finalist on the TV show X Factor. I was the global ambassador for Coca Cola. Crazy that we in Atlanta right now. I did my deal with them. Uh, had the official anthem for the World Cup. Yeah, that was, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Just just for the clout chasers, just in case they don't know, because you know sometimes people hey. don't know. So let's let's give it to them, right? Yeah. David Corey is in the building. What's popping, dog? My brother. Appreciate hey, you for no having problem, me, man. man. I'm already. Right. Um, so let's get straight to it. So I, you was like, man, I want to um. Jay, I really want to holler at you, man. There's a lot of things on my chest I want to get off. Um, and let's just go straight to it. What, what, what's, what's so heavy on, on your heart or on your chest that you feel like you want to just tell the world? Yeah, I feel like, you know, there's like this, this gap in my career and my life. You know, and at the end of the day, I'm not saying I'm necessarily a private person, but like there's certain time lapses where I feel like people didn't understand the heights of my fame and the depths of like the abyss. I've literally come to the conclusion that I was born to dance in the rain. Mm. And for the trials and tribulations that I've really been through, I know most would have died in the drizzle. Mm. I like that. That's a bar. <laughs> it, it is, though. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I've really just come to that conclusion. Like, the things that I've been able to experience, like just being an orphan adopted kid before I got here and then come to America, mm. there was no blueprint for me to try to figure out things. And I love Maryland. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Brazil. And um, my family's from D.C., Southeast Anacostia. So, like, I was just telling your man off camera, like, I feel like I'm an army brat within, like, culturally diverse. Right. It, which is indicative of how deep the music goes for me. Like, mm. I can literally tap dance in every lane but still be true to who I am. And I sometimes, like, that can come off as reaching. But I've always been such an authentic a a person in the aspect of, like, I, if I can't feel it, I can't fuck with it. Mm. So... The try like the different like paths that I've chosen music throughout my career have just been like trial and error, just to try to figure it out, man. And as I blossomed, I never skipped any steps, man. You know what I'm saying? Life is a ladder. When you get to the next step, you're at the bottom of it. Mm, you, you know what I'm saying? So like I've always been able to transition so well, and I'm the doctor behind the specimen that you see. I've always paid attention to the the climate of like where the industry's at, like what's popping here but staying true to who i am mm. because i could have veered off and been something i'm not i don't do i'm not a gimmick artist i don't do things for clickbait like that's just not who i am like my motto is if you like it i love it mm. i'm not here to persuade anybody i just want people to really buy into me being true to who i am and the things that were weighing on my heart is i've weathered so many storms and every time i came out you could still see the smoke coming off of me mm. and i feel like we're so quick to be like, this person fell off or what happened to this. There's so many niche ways. Like, there's so many people that are successful that you don't really know because you're so focused on what mainstream media throws in your in your head in your face. And for me, the fact that I've been able to navigate and continue to keep growing when you would write me off it says a lot about what I stand for. And you know. I probably say almost seven months ago when I posted I'm free that post mm -hmm. that we had discussed and imagine as a kid if you're having a conversation with God and he says son I'm gonna give you everything that you've ever dreamt of my bad <laughs> now you good shit I'm gonna give you everything that you ever dreamt of 
but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy and take away everything that means the most to you in a matter of seconds that no money or accolades can get back. Mm. And that's kind of what happened to me in my career. So as, you know, like I said, I didn't skip any steps. You know what I'm saying? Every school I ever went to, I got a scholarship for singing. So I always knew that, like, music was deeper than just myself because at first it was something that I loved, like, deeply. But when I saw the effect that it has on other people and what it can do for people, mm. that's when I tapped into a deeper spiritual level about it. So back to the post, I'm adopted. I don't have any brothers or sisters. My, my mother and my father are my life. Like, those are, like, manager, best friend, like, anything you could think of, they were there for me. They didn't do music. They just saw some little Latin kid running around the house trying to figure it out. And I, like I said, I before I even got to what people saw in your face, I was being scouted by Baltimore School of Arts in the seventh grade. Like, I started doing musicals and everything and just all these things. And then four-year scholarship to Berklee College of Music, John Mayer, Megan Trainer, like, just all this shit that I'm able to do, and then I finally get to the TV screen, and I start getting all these deals and all these features and world tour. I lose my mother from cancer. I had to leave my world tour with Coke. I was in London when I got the call that she had two weeks left to live, and I have the last voice, the last voice, like the con last conversation I had with my mom, I taped it, and it's her, just the hustle that she is. She's like, yo, you know how I raised you. I need you to stay out there. Don't worry about me. You have this message you need to keep on spreading. I represent the underdogs, my mm -hmm. brother. And this shit's so unorthodox because you don't know what I am when I, when you see me. Who's this tattered? Is he black? Is he white? Is he that? Like, you just don't know. So I've always had to, like, fiend for myself because I wasn't the norm. So I lose my mom. I'm on my world tour. I lose her to cancer. Then fast forward two years later, I lose my dad Christmas Eve night. I know people that have lost their jobs that have thought about offing themselves, let alone both of their parents. So when that happened to me, I fell heavy into addiction. And I was telling you earlier, I'm glad all this alcohol was here because this is what almost destroyed my life. Mm. And, you know, for a lot of people, a lot of men, like I feel like it's hard for us to talk about mental health and really dealing with that shit. And when I tell you I wanted nothing more to do with my life, I, I thought, I, you know, I, I tried to kill myself. My friend, my best friend actually found me at my gravesite saying my goodbyes. Mm. That's how real it was. And the crazy part is my bottom line was never destroyed. I was always able to, like, evolve my look. Like, shit, I was a fat boy when I went on the TV. Like, I lost, I lost the weight. No, no one's telling me to do that. The tattoo aspect, like, I literally have metamorphosized my entire life behind my ambition for music because I always see my, I've always seen myself and I always believed that there was something bigger for me and I always saw my name in them flashing lights. And... You know what I'm saying? Like, the reason I wanted to come here is, is just to tell people, like, if you believe in something that deep, there's nothing in the world that can throw you off your pivot if you believe in yourself. And the only time in my life that that happened was when my parents died, and I fell heavy into addiction. Mm -hmm. Heavy. And I'm here to tell people that time frame when you would see me pop in and pop out, my addiction was running my life, and I started making some bad decisions. That's why I said that comment, I've come to the conclusion, I feel like I'm born like I could dance in the rain. It's because at this point, there's nothing you can do to kill, no, there's nothing you can do to stop me. And if I die, the shit that I'm creating on this earth right now, I'm doing it so it will live forever. So I put real meaning and substance behind what it is I believe in. And I just felt like the way you speak to people and that compassion and, and bro, you're a fucking hustler. I respect yeah. that. I admire it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't skipped the steps, and people really gravitate to you. So I want to really tell people, like, this whole time that I've been struggling, I've also been fighting hard enough to make sure that I didn't drown completely. And now, like, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in God doesn't reward bad behavior. In these past seven months of my recovery, the greatest shit has ever happened to me, more than what I thought when it was really, really up, up. And now it's back to be... It more up up and right. you know what I'm saying uh and when I got married my wife my best friend like they, these people saved my life like I live in Pittsburgh nobody in a million years would have thought I lived in Pittsburgh and I didn't go there for the music aspect I went there because my whole life I was focused on David Corey but David Cheney the human being that's who was dying behind closed doors 
and I took all the proper steps to build myself back up to the man that you see today, and I can finally say that I'm proud as fuck of myself to be in the position where people log on and nothing has stopped me. Everything is elevated from the best financial space. The following is up. It's international. It's what is how and, and the question is how does this kid keep staying afloat? And it's God, bro. Yeah. And the the only thing that I can say that is I never quit. I never stopped. And the one time that I did, I was saved, and I genuinely believe. Like, and I'm in the process of uh, finally publishing my own book. That's it's called Walking with Angels, and that's the only thing I swear to God. Like, I'm here for a reason. And it's just to give people hope, bro. Like, that's what I represent. I didn't mean to go. No, I, fine. You ain't been talking this no, whole time. I don't me. even know how long I've been talking I, for. I, but it's, it's, It doesn't even matter because, like, when it's real, sometimes, when something is real, sometimes you have to, to let it go, right? And sometimes yeah. you just have to let, and like, what they say? Let let go, let like God. peace, right? Remember? It's like, um, peace be still. That yeah. was just, that's what peace I was Peace be um, still, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes when it's real, it forces you to be still, yeah. right? So it don't matter if I'm talking or not because... That's how real it is, and it's peaceful to hear it, and and it's and and peacefulness brings happiness and joy, right? So like I'm listening to it because it's so many things I can relate, right? We look totally different, like you said, yeah. but it's so many things. Behind, when you peel that onion back, yeah, those layers back, that you can see how similar ones are, right? Yeah. And I just wanted to, uh, I wanted you to go through that because I wanted, I wanted to just come back some, right? Like I wanted to, let's reel it in for a second. Yeah, let's do it. And you got uh, kids. Yeah, yeah, I got two two kids. children right now, yeah. right? You you just adopted one, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, that's super dope, and I said that off camera, like because that. especially your story being adopted is like, yeah, it's, it's almost, circle. yeah, feels like I got that's my purpose, right? Somebody yeah. did it for me, let me bless somebody else. But before we even get there, I, I've been saying this um recently a lot. I'm gonna continue to say because I just think it's, it, it, it um it fits this conversation. Now you have a child. I I don't know if your wife said it or even if you right. I've heard my girlfriend um and other women say. The one thing about having a child that they wish, if they could change anything, is they didn't get a blueprint, right? They didn't get a, yeah. a blueprint to like when it's like you have a child and they just drop the the, the doctor literally gives the child to you and tell you yeah. go home, right? Like you, they don't tell you no instruction. It doesn't come with a manual. Yeah, isn't that how life is, right? Not even just what we create and our music and our just our creations, but just life, right? You, yeah. you don't have no blueprint. Even our parents do their best to to raise us, and it's still we have our own mind and we have our own yeah. decisions to make, right? Yeah. But with that being said, the blueprint come from our mistakes. The blueprint come from us living our life. Yeah. Right. So the things that we thought were wrong, or or the addictions that you had, or the things that you that we thought that looked bad, isn't it a blessing how good those things were for you because you learned so much from them? Yeah, man. That's the thing, man. Like. I have so much empathy, bro. I've been through so much and seen so much from the aspect of the music industry, the trials and tribulations and woes that come with that. Everybody want to fuck with you when you up, bro. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. that I'd be a trillionaire if I had a dollar for every person that tried to come in my life when it was convenient to them. So, and, and the thing about me is I've always, I'm my loyalty has actually also at the same breath, as good as a quality as that is, has also been a, a crutch. Mm. Cause you can be loyal to the wrong things and wrong people. And I've always tried to put people in positions that people were like, yo, why are you fucking with this dude? I'm like, I, I he's been a solid person. Yeah, and that's fair though. Cause if he didn't show me anything, I mean, I would think yeah. good men should be like that, right? Yeah, I think everyone should have a chance until they show who they really are. Right, even if it showed it to somebody else, it's like, I, I don't know that experience. At least I'll give you respect enough or is it just due yeah. to show me or whatever? But I, My whole thing is too, man, like, I feel like people really pay attention. If you've been in the game long enough, self-sustainability speaks volumes that you don't really have to yell. Like, mm -hmm. you can really see, like, people's... I said this, I think it was last week, man. I said, yo, I chose growth. I, I decided to stop being a victim. If you can't hear me and I'm doing an open mic, I'll grab another one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if... If I don't feel like I'm producing what I need to, I'll go under I'll go understudy a situation to help you know elevate my craft. I, I'm just uh, remaining teachable is so so important to me, bro. Like the the I have no ego when it comes to advancing my career, but more importantly, my life as a human being, mm. because there's so much foul shit that has happened since the pandemic that has been exposed in so many aspects that have literally sh 
completely shifted my dreams and goals. Mm. What I once thought I wanted is like the Santa effect. You're seven, you find out some shit, or whatever your age was, mine was young. I'm just saying like, everything ain't what it seems to be. And a lot of these young impressionable minds that watch a lot of the internet shit are so mesmerized by people that don't own things. You see somebody flash money, you know they live in their grandma basement. Like I know so, I, I, like I'm so woke now that I know too much that I stay in my lane because the one thing about me, man, I'm a huge Nipsey Hussle fan. Mm. Like as long as I can continuously look in the mirror and see my soul, I'm winning. Mm. Cause I stand on that. Cause there's so much corrupt. I'll do whatever it takes, even if it's getting over on the people that you help build it with or whatever. Like people will do whatever, and that's just not who I am. Mm. And like I said, 2020, bro, the government, just name it, it's been exposed. So if you can find your niche right now, and if it's independent or if it's major, and make money doing what you love, you're winning. And don't let nobody tell you different. Bro, you gotta slow down, man. You it's so much. It's so much that. Yo, like, my bad. I, I'm skipping bro, over. Hold up. My hold brain up. is on one thousand right now. I've been waiting, bro. Hold up. I've been man. waiting to expose. We talk lot. about when we um. It's easy to love you when you up, right? Are we talking about this the other day? It's crazy how, you you go to plant that seed, right? And that's why it's, it's these conversations are so unique in a way, but so similar. Right, and that's yeah. the purpose of my conversations, and I catch myself having the same conversations, but because we all are so different, but so yet the same, 100%. bro. And it's like no matter who you are, it could be a David Corey to the up and coming rapper that I just did in Baltimore, right? And it's, yeah. and and I just sometimes I wish the the people could be exposed to everyone, but of course certain people are only fans of certain people, so they don't even know the other stories, the right? Other stories, right? Yeah. But I say that to say, you plant that seed right in the soil, yeah, and you and you you try to tell everybody um, what you see, right, your visions, and they don't see it. And it's like nah, but once they start seeing that seed grow into a tree, yeah, and they start to see them leaves coming off of those branches, it's like okay, yeah. So um, let me stand under this tree because it could give me oxygen, or let me stand under this tree because it could give me yeah. shade. But nobody wanted to nobody wanted to be a part of planting that seed for it to be a tree right well, you also got to be careful who you're telling these things to bro like I, I i refuse to have conversations with people that can't see into the future let alone they can't see past their own nose bro mm. like you got to protect your dreams like i really really believe that because you think <laughs> how many people think you sound crazy when you say you're gonna do what you're gonna do but in your mind this is a normal day for you normal. you're just trying to add on to whatever it is you're trying to put out there Cause I'm all about manifestation, bro. But man, like that's that scene in Stop the Yard, bro. Where I forget where they was at the club, and he's asking everybody where they're from, and that 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 Columbus Short goes nothing, dog. I'm just repping me. Completely hitting rock bottom and rebuilding who I am now has taught me so much more of ownership and accountability, and that confidence again. I got that walk again, bro. And it's so crazy, cause. As a singer, bro, you don't really have an expiration date. You're going to sing until it's over. You know what I'm saying? So I'm at that point now where I'm taking this journey with a fresh perspective, a new lens, a new shine, a new glow. But I don't need to rely on certain things anymore. I don't need to rely on alcohol. I don't need to rely on certain people that are really only around me at that time because my life serves theirs and they need me more than I, you know, more than they <laughs> really know until it's over. And you cut the umbilical cord, and they're forced to swim on their own, bro. So I, I 100% grow. I, I mean, I 100% agree with you. But think about how long you've been planting your seed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think this shit happens overnight. That's you see probably it. one of the most frustrating parts for me. Yeah, bro. I'm, I mean, like, bro, like this is like before I got my shot on mainstream. For you to see my face, right? And no one is thinking about. Oh, this dude got a four-year scholarship to Berkeley. Oh, this dude has been the paper. Oh, this dude had the feature. Well, my first feature was with Wale in a mm. barn in Bowie, Maryland. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. But it's like before they see any of that stuff or even give a shit about that, you have heard how many no's. You have been literally disrespected, humiliated. You got to have reptile skin, bro. So that was 26 years in the making of me really – saying I got this, I'm going to do this, I don't care what you think. And my thing too, bro, like this, 
it's a it's a hip hop world. Like like you know how hard it is for an independent singer. Mm. It's like a dinosaur. Like where where do you how many like the, the singers we know like they're signed to major like like I'm a hundred percent independent own company everything. So when you see it, the slickest thing I ever said to an exec was he was like, "Yo, how are you doing all this shit?" I was like, "Yo, from my tongue to my thumb, bro." Mm. So if you don't think it's possible, please look at me. It is mm. because. There's a million Jordans you never see that don't make it to the court because the day that they felt like quitting was the day that they were going to get that call, the anointing. That's why I tell people, like, keep going. Yeah, and I mean, you see the, um, it, it gets cliche, but it's, it's not. It's just real. Like and cliches we, for a reason, though. Right. Like, we, we, you know what I'm saying? No, of course, because clearly they work, right? Right. And clearly it's true. Yeah. So it's a cliche. You see the meme of, um, cause when you say that the day they quit was the day they could have got a call or they yeah. would have got a call, right? Yeah. We see the meme of the two guys, which is trying to paint a picture with the ax and the guy is, uh, he's knocking, they, they, they knocking at the, the rocks on rocks each on side. The right. And one of them, the guy gets to get a diamond, yeah. but that's the only diamond behind the wall. Yeah. And this guy stops. He has t like 10 diamonds behind the wall, but he stops. stops yeah. Right just to go take his diamond and it's crazy because a part of that you say how how um just tying the two in you see how people or young people watching the internet or uh, just social media and television and they're looking at everything that's fake right do you feel like it's an obligation that because you know better now that you gotta you gotta show the world better bro i genuinely believe i'm a vessel from god if it's one person, if it's a thousand, or if it's one million, my job is to literally inspire. Like, mm. that is it, and show a pure, true, real, honest way, because at the end of the day, bro, who doesn't love an underdog story? Mm. That movie on Kurt Warner gave me goosebumps, Oh, my bumps, God, bro. to this day. I suggest anyone go out there and watch it. If you don't believe shit is possible, <laughs> that dude could have quit 900 times over, and every time I was like, yeah, he out for it. If I didn't know Kurt Warner in real right. life and know his story and know that he became successful, I, I would have thought he would have quit 90 million times. And every time there was no more of a bigger flag to be like, yo, call that shit quits, he kept going. Bro, I don't know. You, you watched it? Bro, that movie was fucking amazing. amazing. <laughs> yo, <laughs> my wife don't even watch shit like that. She was bawling her eyes out. I was just like, yo, I was like, that shit's so real, bro. And, you know, and that's the thing, too, man. Everybody want to be the man. Mm. Like I said, like, there's enough money out here in this world for everybody to get theirs, and there's also enough time for you to figure out. We got the same 24 hours, bro. Mm -hmm. now, I, now I get it. Everybody doesn't come from the same amount of money or same amount of opportunities, but those underdog stories were those ones that really come from nothing and figured it out. That should be enough right there to let you know that it's possible. What you say, like, even, you said everybody want to be a man, right? People, oh my God. It's multiple ways to skin <laughs> my, a cat. My, am I bringing up a bunch of you, yeah. your brain's working? That's what I'm saying, bro. It's multiple ways to, to skin a cat, right? So yeah. we were just talking off air, right? It's funny how so many things come full circle. We're talking off, off air, you was like, what made you uh, do interviews? I'm like, bro, I never really wanted to do interviews. I never cared that much about nobody else yeah. because I thought I was a star. I thought I needed to be interviewed, right? Yeah. And I said that, I say that to say, like, everybody wanted to be the man because I wanted to be the man. But isn't it crazy how you can become the man by not being a man? Wow. It's crazy how I, to so many, and I'm still working, but, and I don't say this to be um, cocky or anything, but I became the man by giving somebody else the spotlight, mm -hmm. right? I became the man in my space by sharing the light, by, by giving the light away, right? You could become the man by doing charity. You could become the man simply by taking a back, taking a step back. You have no idea, but we have these false ideologies of what yeah. the man look like. Well, I'm glad you said that too, because I talk about this to my wife all the time. I'm like, I have... I've defeated so many, like, people perceive me to be a certain way based on how I look. Mm. The tattoos, the jewelry, what is he, like, bro, the, the levels of racism, the certain things that I, like, encounter on a day-to-day -day basis that I love art, bro. I love tattoos. I'm tatted from my head to my toes, but it's almost sometimes now funny on purpose in a, that I want you to be confused when you see me. Because mm. when you hear this voice, you not gonna think that's coming out of it's me. It's crazy. If, if I had a dollar for every person that think I rap, and not that I ain't got some bars, bro, I, I definitely could spit. I, I can't even lie. I feel to like you. every singer say that. Every singer feel like they can rap. Bro, I, I don't, and I don't, <laughs> I don't, and I don't mean like I'm gonna do a rap. Like I'm talking about like, 
I've always been inspired more by rappers than I have singers almost. And mm -hmm. I say that to say this, like, bro, like I got a record with Jay Mills about to come out. It's one of my favorite battle rappers of all time. I'm about to say, y'all, yeah, come on. People man. wouldn't even think that I, bro, from the Y'all remember Jay Mills, right? Come, come on, y'all. Come, come on, let's just, I just want to make sure yeah, the record is straight. No, I'm just saying, like, I got a crazy record with Murder Mook. Like, mm. I've always been a fan. Like, I told you, I'm a fan, bro. If it's country, if it's jazz, I don't get If that shit moves me, I'm in it. But the way that rappers are able to put words together, bro, they're painters. Like, their way with words is incredible to me. So I've always catered more to, to like, hip-hop. Mm. So how I was trying to carve out my niche within that was I want to make you fucking move in your spirit where you get goosebumps. But at the same time, how do I stay true to myself where I want to go to the club and like I want to see some, you know what I'm saying? I want to see, you know, some ladies. I want to, you know, I, I, I literally try to tap, tap dance into everything. And back to what I was saying when you were talking about how people perceive things, I've always been such a fucking like anomaly. Like they're like, yo, what is this? And I've had to battle that a lot because people be like, what is this lane? Mm. So when I confidently say this today, I'm not an R&B artist, I'm not a pop, I'm an artist. It's Cause I don't want you to put me in a box. And I don't think you can because if you was to go on my page, it's, you've got a song called Body Language and the next song is me singing in the same fucking key as Adele. Mm. It's easy on me. Right. And I know dudes don't just bounce around like that. And sometimes, sometimes, bro, I don't ever talk about like my singing ability. I really don't, because if you like it, I love it. But I feel like as I've gotten older, it's back to that like hunger as a kid. Like I got something to prove. Mm. I want y'all to know, and not in a cocky way, in a confident way. And I feel like we all should have that in us. But the ability to turn that off, because when I walk on stage, it's like, yo, let's go fucking murder this shit. But when I walk off stage, it's like, yo, bro, you trying to go get some burgers and fries and watch the game. I'm always been a very well-centered person, bro. I walk in harmony. I make sure I, I call it daily alignment every morning, bro, because I it's very easy to get caught up in this game, bro. I don't watch people switch up so fast for barely getting anything. Mm. And then you see the most, like, bro, look at Adam Sandler. The man's almost worth a billion dollars to do wears Kmart clothing. That's a prime example of staying true to yourself, bro. If it ain't you, then it ain't true. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Or if it ain't true, it ain't you. Whatever you want to flip that, I'm saying, like, and I never, ever, ever, and anytime I feel like I'm walking somewhere that's not me, I check the shit out of myself, or I now have the right people in my life that genuinely care about David and tell me. That's so important to have those people in your life, yeah. right? Because, shit, you can get blinded just by the the yeses sometimes, no, oh right? Like, especially if you have a bunch of yes men, and if they just want something from you, yeah. right? And you don't know that all, they want something from that. They're, they're leeches almost, right? Oh, yeah. So what happened is you get, you get caught up and you get lost in your own perspective and your own opinion because everybody is just saying okay 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 yeah right so you don't know what's wrong so when, when somebody does challenge you it looks foreign and what we everybody know what we do with, with things that look different we reject it like you said you've been a lot of people been rejecting you your whole life because it looks different yeah. they don't look what everything else look like right i want to talk about addiction for a second yeah um one thing you said that uh that had a spark in my mind was, you know, I'm not relying on any of this, right? Yeah. Because, you know, just just being honest, somebody from somebody who drinks, I wanted to understand the mind of somebody who 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 it became too much from, right? Yeah. So is it that you want, don't want to do it at all? Or is it that when you were doing it, you were relying on it? Can you do it now and have a good time? Or is it just... And I'm glad to, I'm glad that you asked this question. And this is like... And I don't know if anyone's ever come on here and talked about addiction before. Nah. I All right, good. So let's open this up because this is, this is real, right? Like I said, bro, like, you know, people in the streets, like, you know, murders, unfortunately, happen at a high rate, you know. But they what they say, man, like a parent losing their child or like a child losing their parents at a young age. Like I lost my parents in my 20s when I got everything that I ever dreamt of that they were there mm -hmm. pushing me for. These people selflessly came and chose me in a third world country. My life would not be the same. I'd be a city of God for Vela kid. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even have known if I would have made it to 14 out there. That shit makes Baltimore look, and Baltimore is, you know what I'm saying? Like Baltimore is a tough, rugged but place. But third, third world countries, and not to cut you off, third world countries in, in general though. A lot, we think, 
<laughs> it's so funny. I was talking to somebody like, we think we got it bad over here. Yeah, Baltimore is bad, but we have no idea, yeah, bro. But, but I'm they, no, no, I, and, and and I say that respectfully because I love Maryland to death. It's just that like I've been so culturally immersed at such a young age. I was talking to your man off, offline about like how many languages. I mean, bro, when I was when I did my deal with Coke, I I traveled the world over forty countries, like. You're forced to elevate. Mm. And if you don't, you'll get exposed real quick because you eventually taper off, bro. And when I lost my parents, bro, I thought I was dying. And I never, like, I recreationally drank. I wish I smoked weed, bro. I just couldn't, I can't get shit done if I smoke weed. Yeah. Like, I just, like, <laughs> And then you know? you're a singer, though, so it probably would be hard on your lungs, maybe? Yeah, like, I don't know, like, yo, bro, I, I love the smell of weed. I like, I, <laughs> I, I, love, I, I love the smell of weed. I don't care how many people are in front of me smoking, like, cool. Like, but I, like, recreationally, I, I would drink, you know, here and there. Like, but when they died, that's just what I naturally went to. Mm. That was the worst experience. Like, bro, like, that period from... Cause I, like I said, bro, I was always, I, bro, I, I, I acted, I did plays, I did musicals. I know how, like, bro, like I, my mom died and I literally was performing in front of 30,000 people the next day in mm. upstate New York. I'm so able to do this. Cause I feel like as artists, like, all right, everybody quiet on the set. All right, bet I gotta go. Like we're so able to tap into yeah, that. Turn element. it on and turn it off. Bro, I was a magician. Mm. I was labeled as the professional. I could literally, you know, shout out to my boy DJ J. Like, he's seen me, bro. Like, knock out, like, seven songs like it's nothing. Motherfucking tr trashed. No one in the room would know mm. except him walking me to the car. And, like, you know what I'm saying? So when it got to a point that my physical image started to, like, get different, like, people was like, yo, is he do cocaine? I'm like, bro, I never, I don't do no fucking drugs. Like, like I was reliant that, it was dictating my day. Can we talk? So, um, I did talk about addiction on here before. I just didn't um, release it. It was with my, one of my sponsors, uh, Top Dog. We talked about perks, but hold up. That I and because I want you to expound on that. Isn't it crazy? I feel like I feel like we got the stereotypes or the stigmas all fucked up. I think we got the stigma yeah. all fucked up. But let me explain. This right here is one of the most dangerous 100%. drugs it's, it can be it's a slow death bro. like we talk about uh we talk about um everybody say he does coke um does he smoke and, and it's like bro do you understand that so my, my mom's was a a, a, a crack addict right and mm -hmm. since we speaking about it right my friend i won't say who his mother was an alcoholic yeah and that was like my best friend i call him my brother but I saw the difference in somebody being a crackhead. Not saying my mother was any better or anything like that, yeah. or her her addiction was any better. But I've seen yeah. a alcoholic in the room when they're under the influence, and I've seen people who does coke or crack yeah. under the influence. It's totally two different things, and I think by far the alcoholic is so worse. You know, you know. Um you know, my dad, like, you know, my mom died and, you know, like, you lose your life partner. Like, you know, he eventually, you know, became one. And, like, it was so crazy to watch that because as, as bad as I felt for him, like, he felt bad for me. He's like, you know, you lost a mom. Like, I'm like, well, you lost your best friend. You lost your life partner. Um, And when he died Christmas Eve night, bro, like, the wildest shit that I can say is the worst thing, the worst things in my entire life happened on sunny days. Mm. My association with good was so fucked. My perception on people, I hated everybody. I want everyone to feel as much pain as I did. Mm. I isolated, which is the worst thing you can do in addiction. I didn't ever, I was in denial for so long that I had an issue because I was living like an outlaw. I had no brothers, I had no sisters, I had no parents. I'm making hella money. I'm doing what I love, I'm traveling the world. I was at I was on that type of time like who the fuck gonna tell me what to do, mm -hmm. and I was really living like that. I almost be, I like I became like a vigilante. I was like outside of who I really am, and like I said, I was still thriving in my music. But then when it started creeping over into my personal life, I started making bad business decisions. Mm -hmm. I had the wrong people around me. When the pandemic hit, I had a crazy baby mama story, all that. I know we all got them out there. I'm trying to tell you that shit make love and hip hop look like a fucking novella. You know what I'm saying? Like horrible. Like when you're already dying on the inside 
and people have it out for you to keep on stabbing you when they've declared you dead and you make it out on top, you walk with a different swag. Mm. And that's where I'm at today because when the pandemic hit, my wife saved my life, bro. She's never, she didn't know what addiction was. She's never dated anybody. And so when we would link up, she would just get the, you know, we going out, we getting fucked up tonight. We having a good time. But what she didn't know was the other 30 days out the month, I was still operating like that. Mm. So people in the DMV were like, yo, D, you know, man, DC is so talented at the thought. Like, yo, I pop out and I, my addiction's running my life. Yeah, and it's easy in DC. And, yo, and the thing about it is, like, the part that really bothers me the most that I want to address on here is that, like, how dare you? Mm. If you never walked a mile in somebody's shoes of everything that I just told you, fame, money, everything that you ever want, and you have the the audacity to judge me at my worst, That's all I can it. say is this. It's going to happen to you, and I don't wish that shit on my worst enemy, but that's what people do. They poke at you when you're down and all that, but when you make it through, and I can confidently say in these seven months during my recovery that the greatest shit that I'm getting ready to announce this Saturday, the laugh, and bro, like, it's just funny to me because I'm not a hypocrite. What do I look like? Because the thing about it was, bro, I was so deep in my addiction, I'll never forget this. My wife, I told her this too. I was like, yo, God himself could not stop me. Mm. And I wasn't f taking accountability that I had so much PTSD and so much shit that I hadn't addressed until I surrendered. My faith was shook. I had to surrender. I had to admit that I was willing to give myself, all of myself to God, admit I was powerless, and when the pandemic hit, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, bro, because I was always focused on David Corey, but I was focused to focus on David Cheney, the human being. Mm. I checked myself into rehab. I completed my program, it was 36 days. And it was the most humbling thing I've ever done because it wasn't the David Corey show. I didn't do anything that I wanted to do. It was every, I, when I say I didn't do everything I didn't want to do, it's everything that I had to do, but I wasn't used to being told what to what do. What to do, yeah, I can imagine. It's the closest thing to jail I've ever seen. Bro, seeing people come in from jail, people like waking up not knowing where they are, handcuffs to the thing, the roommates, all the stuff, like, the thing is how much addiction can ruin families, bro, how mm. much it can ruin your life. And I wasn't willing to lose my marriage, you know, I, I broke trust with people that I, I had to regain back that I'm still regaining back. And now everyone's like, yo, this dude is on his shit. And the thing about it is you can't go to my page and not see that I chose growth. And that's what I'm here today to tell you that it is possible and that there is help out there. And that was the most humbling thing I've ever done to say, I need help. No, I think it's powerful that we having a conversation, especially like you said, in the room full of alcohol. Because yeah. you know, um, I'm on the side while I do, I, I drink it recreational, but at the same time, some of my worst nights before I was able to drink responsibly, like they say, yeah. right? Before I was understood what that looked like, some of my worst nights came from being under the influence and being intoxicated, right? But so you I didn't want to admit that because you were in control, right? Or were you not in control? Um, so in the moment, I, I, I was intoxicated, so I really couldn't even tell you, and it was yeah. bad. It wasn't like, you know, you get drunk and intoxicated, but like when I mean blackout, like I don't know if nobody, hopefully oh. nobody, listening to this experienced it because it's not cool. Oh, and I, I did it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I understand. Blackout so yeah, in cool. that moment, I don't know. But yeah. I know waking up, it was so embarrassing. Embarrassing, right? yeah. it's, it's like, I did what? Oh, my God. That's not that's not me. Hold on. I, I, I'm glad. Let me expand on that. That was what made it even worse to me. Bro, I don't got no DUIs. I was king of Uber. I was diamond elite. Mm. I was the smartest functioning alcoholic you ever meet. Mm. So I'm literally confusing people. I'm so good at acting at this point. And that was the part that like, I had to get real with myself. Like, dog, like this ain't real. To the point where, like I said, bro, like I really, I, I, I went away, it was in the mountains, you know, I, I, I did everything I said I was gonna do. And I, I'm glad you asked me because you was like, yo, is this something that you wanna do for life? When I went into the admissions office, I was like, yo, I don't know what living sober my whole life is to me. I don't think that is why I'm here. Mm. I'm here to regain balance. Mm. I was a balanced motherfucker until you said, hey David, we're gonna fuck your whole life up today. Anybody that has ever experienced that when you lose the things most important to you that money can't get back, 
you're go I, I I'm gonna be the guy that's gonna be right here supporting you but I can't tell you what to do because in that moment nobody could tell me shit I had to experience that pain for myself mm. to make adult decisions and I've recognized that I can never go back people places and things there's nothing in my life that's the same mm. not the same friends around me I'm married I don't live in the same state every my my my, my following is up because I got real with myself and I admitted that. And while I did that, I simultaneously didn't realize how many other people I was helping. Mm -hmm. When I posted that, bro, I had people all over that I didn't even know were struggling with addiction and mental health issues. And I just wanted to make it, like I said, bro, how people perceive me. I'm a rapper, da, da, da. they don't know I sing, they don't know I'm deep. So I, I that's really what I stand for, like, yo, bro, I'm a, I, I told him, I was just like, I want to be a well-balanced person. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to be able to be in a room. I'm going to be able to have a couple drinks with my friends. Okay. I'm not there yet. That's not a conversation yet, but my goal was to restore I balance. Uh, but I, I'm I, glad you asked that because I've never said that. It's not like, yo, I, you know, like, and, and that's the thing, bro. Like, everybody journey different. Mm -hmm. I'm the last person to judge anybody because you just don't know until you go through it. But coming here today was to let people know that I made it out the fire, mm. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like I said, you know, shout out to my best friend, Danny, bro. That was the lowest day of my life. Like, I literally had that planned out for myself. Like, I I, I, I knew exactly how I was going to do it, and I went to the grave site, and he, I don't, like, yo, when I tell you, like, he found me at my parents' grave site and walked me off the ledge. That was the wildest shit that's ever happened to me. I've never talked about that before. That's why I was like, yo, I'm not laughing at that. I'm just like, I, can't. I was like, yo, I gotta get this off my chest to Jay because I feel like some of the people that do follow you, they just don't get it. Mm. And when they maybe they hear it, they could be like, fuck, I don't even know if I can make it through a quarter of what this man is saying. And so how was you, how, how did that look? Like you say he, he met you at the gravesite, like what were you going to do? I, I, I wanted no more parts of being on this earth. Mm. And the thoughts that were in my head were so horrible that it's like, I can't live with this in my brain anymore. And you know, alcohol, it suppresses everything. I was so good at just swiping shit under the rug. Like, like bro, like to the point where I became almost like a robot about it. Like, yo bro, I was, I was closer with my parents. I'm, I was closer to my parents than a lot of people are that came out the womb of their parents. Like these people selflessly came and got me. That shit knocked me off my pivot. Like I didn't have brothers and sisters. You know, I'm not close with my family like that. And the closest ones to me, I dealt with a lot of betrayal. Mm. And it's just so crazy. You start seeing people pop their heads out and everything. Like, how does this dude keep on shining? Damn, did he get another chain? Damn, his followers went up. Damn, how did he do that? Damn, he's still hitting them notes like that? And he got a feature with who? He just did a dip. How? God. Mm. God. And accountability. And admitting I was, I'm wrong and I need help. And that's what I was in denial of because my bottom line never fucked up because I was still doing everything that I love. So you spoke on how you was like, uh, you was like Uber, you King, you uh, you was function a functioning alcoholic. Yeah. So what is a what does that look like for the people that might not even know or, or might be dealing with the same thing? Bro, you know, my my boys to say, and I I mean I can, I always tell people, man, I make light of dark situations because I'm not mad at who I was because my past has helped create such a beautiful present. It's made me recognize how to deal with things. When life gets tough, you don't have to run to a drug. And that's what I did essentially. But he would always be like, all right, am I getting the before three o'clock, David, or am I getting after three o'clock, David? Mm -hmm. To the point where you could start seeing even how I post. I, I went to the gym every day, bro, I never missed a day. So even if I was out with y'all till four in the morning lit, and bro, I'm a hundred pounds soaking wet. I'm throwing them back with the best of them. You know, I'd be like, yo, man, you're going to get fucked up this weekend, bro. I'll make your Saturday on a Monday look weak <laughs> and still get shit done and make money. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm not proud of it, but, like, when it runs your schedule. And then I knew it got bad because when I met my wife, I've, been, I've known her for almost four years. We've been married for a year next month. This woman is, I swear, I swear to God, that woman can get whatever she wants. Whenever she wants, she saved my life, bro. I seriously believe that she was put on this earth to save me from killing myself. Mm. Like this woman and her family loved me at my lowest, didn't use me at my lowest. The ones that were around me enabled me 
it's easy to enable a drunk. I'm the mm-hmm. nicest person in the world. And at the end of the day, I don't want any more issues. So it's almost like, yo, here, bro. Like, you don't want no more problems. And then having a child and being manipulated with that. Yo, bro, there's so many opportunists in this world. It's, it's crazy. And it's just like, like, cliches are cliches for a reason, bro. It be the closest ones to you. I don't care if I get hate on from afar. I don't know you like that. I can swipe the hate off. But the envy comes with inside your circle. Mm-hmm. And that runs deep. Because, you know, and, you know. Bro, what we do, if you really put it in perspective, yes, we're in the music industry. The world is way bigger than the music industry, right? But the average nine to five person, I don't I don't care what you do. I, I respect everything. I'm just saying they don't understand our lifestyle. They don't understand that we could get a call in an hour from now. There's an email right now that's life-changing for you, and you have to get on a plane and explain to your girl and your daughter that daddy's going to go be gone for a week, and you might be sleeping on a couch just to get one opportunity, <laughs> one opportunity because you bet that much on yourself. Do you know how much fucking like resilient self-belief like that takes a lot, bro. And I've been put in those situations. And like I said, the pandemic for me was that time to get myself together. And, you know, if you can't go a day without drinking and that's yo and the crazy story. And I'm glad you asked me this question. Nobody ever had the balls to call me out and say I had an issue. Not one person. Not the close, not one person. Yo, D, maybe you should chill. No. There'll be conversations here and there, of course, or whatever, but like, it was this random person. I was in Vegas. They were like, yo, man, I've seen you come here like the past three, four days. Like, uh, no, it's not my place, but I think you should go talk to somebody. Do you need to talk to somebody? I'm like, what the, like, this stranger. That's why I said some of the best conversations I did have as I got closer to checking myself into rehab were with strangers. Because mm. I feel like there's a community that understands this, uh, what's unspoken, right? And I'm like, I don't got no issue. Who the fuck is you? I'm ignorant and shit. I'm belligerent. When I'm like, they're like, if I see you here tomorrow, come get the same thing and don't drink. Mm. I was like, bet. You know me, I'm drunk. I'm like, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. This is when I started experiencing the physical part of it. Like Amy Winehouse, like alcohol is the most destructive drug. You cannot, now there's some that do, but like it's, they tell you not to wean off of it by yourself because your body physically needs it. Mm. So when you go into rehab, you're in detox and some people are there longer than others. Like they monitor you because it's that your body, the physical complications behind it, you can die. Mm. You can die from alcohol withdrawal. So the shakes, like, I was like, ah, oh. like, now I'm really starting to think about, you know, my life. And, like, once it got to the point where I just, like, was done living a lie, you know, one of life's greatest teachers can be a mirror, bro, if you're real enough to look at it and really identify what you got going on. And so often in this fast-paced life we live, bro, we pass it. That mirror is is, <laughs> is real because... Even on top of that, right? Because the mirror don't have to be physical, you mind right? Me? No, it's fine. It, the mirror could don't have to be um, uh, literal either, right? You know what else could be a mirror? Silence. Yeah. A lot of people can't be in a room by themselves because they gotta deal with they themselves. Gotta deal with themselves, right? Like yeah. that shit will have like have if you're not right, will fuck you up. And it's crazy that um, but I'm glad you were able to finally like, see it. And get through it and get the help you need, man. I, yeah, no, I appreciate dope. it, man. It, that was the that was my biggest accomplishment as as uh, as an adult, bro. Because I know some people, man. Some losses, man. You hear a lot of stories, bro. A lot, a lot, a lot of cats in the game. Like a lot of their homies get killed in gun violence and all that stuff. They never, they never recover from that, you know. And it's hard, bro. Like, and I just was like, man. I, I, I want to say it was like the like third day I was there, bro. Like I broke down so bad. I was like, yo, what the fuck have I been doing? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, yo, I refuse to be a victim. I swear to God, I listen to Eminem's Not Afraid probably every day, bro. Mm-hmm. Because when you have kids and you have other people that really love you, you realize that you're not just living for yourself. Like you have other people that, that rely on you. And I had to get my shit together and when I moved to Pittsburgh, bro, it's been the best music I ever put out in my life. The streams that I'm doing independently, 
the deal that I'm getting ready to announce this Saturday to move on some positive notes. I might say you might as well just tell me the deal because I mean, yeah. shoot, we ain't going this, this. We not we not time constraint right here. So yeah, yeah. That's how we release this. You probably already. All right, right but yeah. It so uh, this Saturday, man, I'm announcing my uh, partnership with Hard Rock Hotels. I'm gonna be the new ambassador for their uh, Pinktober campaign, and I'll have the official song that's gonna be syndicated worldwide. And uh, that's just an honor to be a part of. And then uh, I appreciate you, bro. Thank <laughs> yeah, you, make man. some noise, man. Give that, him some love. That, that's man. love, man. Um, and uh, I got a huge single dropping on my birthday, October 8th. And um, like I said, bro, like nothing that's happened in my life has been with the same people, same places, nothing. And I know that's because I finally started changing my life, mm. started getting my life together. Because your personal life, bro, like it will seep over eventually. This shit can't last forever, bro, and what goes up must come down. And that's what I realized. I thought I was indestructible. You couldn't tell me anything. At the end of the day, and the ignorance that alcohol also created within my life was the, like, it, it, was, like, it was my kryptonite. It, it, it was bad, bro. Like that's, It's crazy because you said you were drinking every day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, damn, that's... And nobody said nothing. Like Functioning, bro. And the worst part about it was alcohol is normalizing our culture, bro. Like yeah. what we do, like, you know, you go to parties, that's what it is. Football Sundays, like it's a normal thing and it's the most accessible thing to get. Mm. Bro, in Pittsburgh, you can go to Sheets Gas Station in PA. They sell vodka there now, rum, beer. It's 24-7, 365. Like when you really, when I first came out, the propaganda behind alcohol. So we, when we we're, we're in rehab, you know, like they give you like a week after you get out of detox, you can start working out again. And it's like I never realized just how much, how much alcohol was really is plastered in our culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a whole lifestyle change. And I, it, it's 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 a uh, it's a fake confidence. It gives you the allure that you're indestructible. But I like, yo, do I really need this to be who I am? Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized how much it had a hold on my life. And, you know, that like I said, there's a lot of trust that was broken and a lot of people that needed to believe in me again. And they're starting to see, like, damn, this kid really was brave enough to speak on this shit because there's a lot of people that I feel like, look at how many people we've lost in the past two, three years through addiction, gun violence. Like, this shit is, mental health is real, bro. And I, I'm just glad they're starting to shed more light on it. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like it's definitely real and, I, I, I'm, I'm almost curious to know, do you think they're starting to shed more light or do you think we're just getting older? Because I feel like this should have always been a thing and I would good, hope it was, right? That's like, a good point. Um, I feel like uh, social media has made it like such a, non, like a, such a, a vast place to just like, you can find so much more stuff that like when we were coming up, like bro, I would never in a million years thought DJ Khaled was gonna be the most influential person on Snapchat to be what he is today. Yeah, yeah. So it just goes to show you like how deep the the technology has advanced. Like, that's why I say, man, there's, you know, there's so many like cool ways for young entrepreneurs to get theirs and have opportunities. Like you, bro, you're like, you're, I'm sure you got a, a, like a whole slew of people that are inspired by you to wanna do podcasts now. Mm -hmm. Everybody that has a mic doesn't mean they're worthy of sharing that information, yeah, my brother. Bro. Let's and, be very clear about and that's, that. And I'll be trying to tell people that, like, <laughs> yo, I don't like. I don't, I don't know what like if people just not spiritual or because even if you're not religious, you gotta believe in something. Hundred percent. I just feel like people, you gotta stand for something or you're gonna die for nothing, oh, bro. I right? Agree, bro. And it's like I've seen I've seen people have platforms and they just give off the just I don't want to say negative, but they just. It be just giving off the wrong shit in my opinion. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like if it's not to inspire, you, then what the fuck is it for? Like you know what I'm saying? If, you, if it's not to help somebody else, I don't know. I just it's crazy. Okay, so let me ask you this question: Have you ever seen an industry that's so cutthroat like this, where people are willing to even step on their own children, best friends, brothers, just for a, a position of power to abuse it because maybe they wasn't the man in high school and need to resurrect some? I'm the man now. Like it's a lot of weird shit going on, bro. People do a lot for literally. You know what they say, man, when you go to somebody's funeral, it's not necessarily, you know, for how much, like, they, how, it's how you made them feel of why they're there, bro. Like, mm -hmm. impact, to me, is so much more than clicks and likes. It is. Like, look how many excerpts and, and, and clips we have of Nipsey. Look at Pac, that motherfucker. God, I mean, he's on he my- He forever. He's on my arm, bro, him and Mike. Like, 
that, that dude, bro, like his mind is so be, like beautiful, like Nipsey, like they've been talking about ownership. So let me ask you, I, yeah. I, I wanted to talk to, I got this in my notes, actually, I wanted to talk to you yeah. about the um, the mind of the this super talented person, like people in general, right? Because when I hear about addiction, you, you come to me about addiction, I see your work online, and when I do my research, is phenomenal Appreciate and then when you tell me you 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 had an addiction it's almost for me it's like okay i wasn't surprised because you were so talented and i was thinking like do you think the mind of these talented geniuses not just regular t- I'm, I'm talking about like kanye west i'm talking about um shit who else i had uh <clears throat> people won't hate me r kelly right i'm talking about the the geniuses that we had it seemed like it was always something that came with us do you think a part of that, I know you lost your parents, but do you think a part of that was because your mind was running so much on a million percent? Bro, yeah. You know, my uh, my therapist told me, it's crazy, he was like, your gift is tapping into your pain and using it as a paintbrush to depict the most beautiful, painful things that people can relate to. Mm. Like, my ability to tap into vulnerable situations and real pain runs so deep, like, I'm able to take the most fucked up things and put it in perspective that pain is universal, bro. We all go through real shit. And that's, it's kind of like a sick gift to a degree, bro. And like at the end of the day, like even with the alcohol aspect, I did some of my best shit that I don't think I'm, I'm just guessing. Like, I don't know if I would have been able to tap into those thoughts sober. My darkest moments were some of the most beautiful things I've ever been able to create. So that sometimes, in the in the beginning of my recovery, I was like, will I ever be able to tap into those things again? And obviously it takes time, but like, I got voice memos just three, four in the morning, just blacked out some of the most beautiful things that I never would imagine that I would have said. Isn't it crazy how- Yeah, you know I mean, like, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy how, like, like I said, our most talented people have some of the biggest shit that come with them, like shit. Mike Tyson, like we, it's so many yeah. uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, it's all, it all, Tupac. It all was like some shit that came yeah. with it, like a lot, it's like a heavy burden yeah. almost. No, it, it, I can't, bro. Like, I cannot turn off my brain. Like, I have literally spoke everything that I ever wanted to in existence, and I protected that at all costs. Like, bro, like, if when when we talk and, and you're telling, I I know this sounds crazy, but. When you were talking about your, your mother's addiction, I don't even know what your mom looks like, but my brain immediately started painting a picture of you next to her, next to the one that was in the, the front of was alcohol. Like, that's my brain it just moves like that. Like, I see everything. Mm. Like, what if Rose, what do you call his project? Uh, seeing sounds? Mm. Like, I genuinely believe, like, my brain is built so different. And that's why, as I got older, I protected my thoughts because man he crazy or yo man that ain't gonna okay so in the absence of the addiction how are you slowing it down now oh shit bro like meditation for sure meditation has been key um and journaling bro i have Mm. so much that i always want to talk about and i bottled it up you know there was a lyric that bob said like drinking that like drinking every bottle trying to get to the bottom like there's something like it's almost like and I had to go through that, bro. Like, and I also, how do I say this? I felt like I was screaming in the crowded room full of people that, and no one could hear me for a long time, bro. Just because, like, you realize that, bro. I mean, do you know how desensitized? Like, how, what's the word? Desensitized. Desensitized. We are nowadays. You, like, bro. Like, do I? I, man, rest in peace, P and B Rock. That shit almost. I mean, that shit made me like. Just imagine that, like, someone's daughter can go online and see that stuff. And then, you know, the RIP t-shirts come. And then, like, two weeks later, we're on to, like, yo, did you see what Megan Thee Stallion was twerking? Like, people are just so, like... It I, comes and it goes. It's just ridiculous. I, I feel like we're losing that that, that self of, like, the, the human in us to, like... It, it, like, that's why... One thing I definitely, like, I'll go on, like... IG breaks, like where I'm like, all right, look, I need to cleanse, like I need to detox off of IG, like there's way more going on in the real world that feeds my soul than this bullshit. Like, I, nah, like if I didn't do music, bro, I would not have a fucking Instagram. I swear mm. to, I swear to God, I, I believe bro, you, bro. I, 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 I hear so chilling. many creatives say that though, because it's like, 
it can be fucking ex- exhausting. exhausting. Oh yeah. my god, it's like, <laughs> bro, relax. I, yeah, yeah, it's like relax. Even it's just and 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 we are desensitized, and I don't want to be like that because yeah. it's like, bro. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say I'm desensitized anymore, but I like. I'm forced because, like, we see it, it's, it's, it's almost a norm. Shit. Yeah. And like, even not even uh P and B rock. Yeah, we, we seen Nipsey Hustle. Wow. We, that's just we seen um, what was it? Eric Ghana, the guy that got choked out. Um, that's that's him, right? Uh, shit. Um, t- t- tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, Tamir, right? Rice. I mean, god damn, like, yeah, yeah. we see all of this. Yeah. And it's like it's in our face, bro. And then let's not even talk about Instagram because Instagram they will show us that shit, but then they'll uh, give us a violation for saying I beat you in a dance battle. Like yeah. it's just fucking ridiculous. Like social media just don't. I, I'm sorry, I, I go forever about that, yeah. motherfuckers. Man. I, I, I will say this to any uh, creative just trying to get into the game or just whatever it is that you're trying to find out that feeds your soul. Like take everything in doses, bro. Like if you think that a part of that is gonna help you know feed your soul and like get you on track with your brand take bits and pieces man but still just man like take a break from that shit because i'm trying to tell you bro like that's the one thing that's never like strayed me away from who i am like i don't i i bro we play sports in school we got girls there's certain shit that like i see people are so thirsty for attention and things that they probably never had and i'm telling you i i get it i i said this to my wife the other day i was like there's no better high than music for me. Like mm-hmm. I, I, that shit is so euphoric that, like you know, like yeah, I'm I'm also performing uh November six Sunday night football Kansas City Chiefs versus Titans. So make sure y'all tune into that. <laughs> like the, the the subtle flex. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I let's not get it fucked up, bro. Like life is good right now. I'm just saying, like, but like it, you see something like, you know, person that you like not that you really like look up to, like slide through your DM, like that's a high, like damn, like, you know, I've looked up to you for years. That, for me, that that doesn't go in a cocky aspect for me. That goes into like, I wanna get in the studio. Like that's motivating. Like I use things as motivation, but it's real easy to like put a battery in somebody's back. So when I see people get things and they just start to become who they're not, I can't say I don't understand it, but I could never live like that. Mm. And that's the thing that really started turning me off once the pandemic hit because so much shit was exposed. Our government is fucked. Um, <laughs> yo, the election was, Ed, bro, I could go on and on. Yo, bro, when I tell you, like, you wanna call it conspiracy theory, I'm big on blogs. Like, I, I, I read a lot of shit and there's so many people out here that will do the most soulless shit. We are literally playing Russian roulette in the most soulless, moralist game ever in life. But the music why? industry. It's not even. It's. I think it's a lot of more. It's not even just the music industry. It's. It's, it's, it's uh, human. Okay, there you go. It's, all right, it's, all right. it's. It's the. It's the price of freedom. Yeah. And when somebody said that to me before, I was like, "Wow!" I'm like all this killing, like the fact that somebody can, if you think about it, bro. Not saying that we should. We shouldn't be free, but just think about it. It's pros and cons to everything, yeah. right? Somebody can literally be in this world. Yeah. And decide that they want to take not one life, but multiple lives at any given moment yeah is the price of freedom yeah you know what i'm saying because that's what comes with it the fact that i could just whenever i want to kill somebody yeah whoever want to kill yeah i can make it happen that's sad that's sick bro yeah that's ridiculous yeah it's it, it, and you know just who would ever thought like the um the game would be so dangerous for you to be an artist and like you know like i i would always i had a conversation man um Obviously, it's one of the wildest conversations, but uh, Warren Buffett's brother was at my performance at the World Cup. We did a private event, and he was talking to me about money and the values of money and certain things, but that shit is the root of all evil, bro. It's crazy that you can't... Some people like to buy boats. Some people want season tickets. Some people want jewelry. My thing has always been jewelry, right? Some people want the baddest car in the world. In our industry we're targets for nice things mm. and that's hard work and some people literally I, I for me the thing that kills me the most every day is watching people go out of their way to tear other people down on their blessings like i had i look at everything as motivation not why does he have it how do i get that that's been my thing not why how mm. that 
I, I'm a hustler, bro. I'm all about my brand. Like, Urban Rock Records, that's the company I created. That's the brand. Everything about me, like, how you got the product placement. Like, we are walking billboards for our business. And the crazy part is how much it is in protective mode in 2022 because people are so quick to try to tear down everything you built. Mm. And sometimes it's one wrong tweet, some shit they'll pull up 10 years ago. Like, that's why for me, and I want this point to get across, the reason why I want to come here is because I looked at the Jay Hill show like the end of 8 Mile. Mm. I am white. I am a fucking bum. I do here tell these people something they don't know about me. And those people are speeches like, it's basically what are you going to say now when I just told you everything I went through and I'm standing in front of you to tell you that I beat it. Mm. A.K.A. the only person that's going to destroy me is me. I love it, bro. <laughs> I, I appreciate you for even um, blessing my platform with the story. I man. I, um, it, bro. I appreciate you for having me. Nah, man. No problem. Uh, congratulations on all the success, everything else we got coming up. Uh, is there any any other thing that we can support you? How do we support you? Of yeah. course, you being independent. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, David Corey, uh, make sure y'all tap on my Instagram. October 8th is my birthday. I'm dropping my new single. Um, make sure you tune in October 1st. Um, I'm announcing my deal with Hard Rock. Make sure you tune in November 6th, Sunday Night Football, Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, my new project is in the works, man. Uh, my, my new EP is going to be coming out. And my last project I dropped is called 137. Streams are crazy. And, bro, just support people that are trying to, you know, put out a positive message, man. It's like my man Jay Hill right here, bro. We trying to stand for something, bro. So I just appreciate you for having me. Hopefully somebody got something out of this, bro. Now, hopefully, man. I appreciate you for coming. David Corey, everybody. Mr. Jay Hill, Jay Hill Podcast. is a wrap. We out.